there. And if we ignore that, we ignore that at our own risk. That if we think that we can do what we want around the world and not incite hatred, then we, then we have a problem. They don't come here to attack us because we're rich and we're free. They come and they, and they attack us because we're over there. Every single Republican on that stage wanted to get in their two cents about what Dr. Paul was talking about. Can I have 30 seconds, please? No, 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 no wait a second. Let's all get 30 they, seconds. They, they are coming. Oh, they, oh, 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 we, we all want 30 seconds to talk about this. We'll, we'll. During the Republican primary, after each debate, uh, Fox News would do this, you know, the phone texting, Sean Hannity, heck us right now, whatever the digits were for your candidate, you know. In each Fox News poll, this was a poll conducted by Fox News, Ron Paul overwhelmingly won. Here's a look at the uh, early results of our text message poll. In first place, Ron Paul, surprisingly. Okay. What does it say that he's doing so well in our text messaging well, among those uh, watching uh, Fox uh, to News? To be honest, right it says now. absolutely nothing. Maybe he's a little bit better organized than having his organizers do, do the necessary dialing. On the one hand, you're taking it seriously enough to, to put it on. And then on the other hand, you're saying, no, don't pay attention to the person who's in first place. Look, look text look, polls are text polls. Right. It's like no, internet no, no, polls. Sorry. It's not even phone calls. He did it's not, not a phone please. call, right? He did not win no, that no, debate. Please. He did not win it. No, no, no. Why would he try to discredit their own poll? It doesn't make any sense. In second place, Governor, you're in second place with uh, 27 percent. Third place, Mayor. if Romney had won, you would have seen ticker tape parade stuff happen in the studio. You know, they would have brought out you know horses and Clydesdales and chariots. Would have you know talked for about 10 minutes about how great Romney is, and it makes sense that Romney won. Sean Hannity, I mean, more than anybody else on Fox, just without any subtlety, rips down anything that he disagrees with and doesn't even provide an excuse or an explanation. If we feel strongly about it, why don't we declare... If a woman is being well, raped next door, we, we just do run. nothing there either? This is just going to shake the establishment. They do not want this guy running for president. I want to be president of the country, not president of the Republican Party. Well, you got to get the nomination first. Yeah, but the, the this is an unusual figure, a liberty-minded, anti-war person. That this is not only not a contradiction in terms, it's the only sensible political philosophy there is. I think Ron Paul basically, for me, it's done. That was a fabulous boost for Ron Paul's campaign. I think that's when a lot of people woke up. There's no question that, that Ron Paul struck a chord and it resonated with many people. The Ron Paul moment, and that's exactly what that was. And it was after that moment, after, after May, that, that traffic all over online really started to explode. When Giuliani gave us a boost, uh, then I realized that there was a lot of support out there. <laughs> What happened to your party? They've lost their way. It was the lead story in the next 24-hour news cycle, you know, and, and of course, the, I think that what they all figured was, well, that'll be the end of Ron's campaign. Ron Paul is a no one. Ron Paul really has no business being on stage. And they have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Why stomp out the grassroots candidate and only reward those with $100 million that get money from the special interest? Republican presidential candidate Rudy Giuliani is being assigned some summer reading. If there was a Guinness Book of Political Showmanship, Congressman Ron Paul would be in it today. I'm giving uh, Mr. Giuliani a, a reading assignment. We have uh, Mr. Giuliani studying tonight. He's home reading all those books, and he's going to come back and he's going to apologize to me. And he's going to say, I'm sorry, Ron, I just didn't know. This is what I expect him to read before the next debate. The titles include Dying to Win, which looks at the motives of suicide bombers, Blowback, which examines U.S. foreign policy. Ron Paul was able to have a press conference afterwards showing that, indeed, the government reports themselves have been talking about the same things he had. Paul brought along Michael Scheuer, the former head of the CIA's Osama bin Laden unit. Our leaders tell us that uh, the Muslims hate freedom and hate liberty and hate women in the workplace, and that's got nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with what we do in the Islamic world. Jeremy in California, Giuliani's response to Paul and the subsequent applause by the audience just goes to prove how ignorant and arrogant we are here. That's a book list all Americans would be well served to read. The reason this got so large so fast is because people did exactly what they wanted to, to express themselves to their peers, the people that mattered on their street corner in their neighborhood.
you know, traditionally uh, in politics, and I was told early on when I first got in politics, you know, you develop your logo and you stay uniformed and everybody does this and you put this on every piece of literature and your TV and your bumper stickers, everything else. And I kept remarking the, the characteristic of our campaign uh, was there was no characteristic, you know. It was miscellaneous, spontaneous, homemade, and all sh shapes and sizes and colors. And it turned out that it was uh, not uniform, and everybody knew it, but it didn't seem to hurt us. The, the sign bombing culture that developed as, as a, uh, a, a means of, of spreading awareness, and was something that I did, you know, climbing up on overpasses, you know, putting up signs with, uh, with zip ties. These are all things that the grassroots thought of because their man wasn't getting the attention. So they basically had creative tantrums. We started the Ron Paul Revolution sign production. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we would do this every Friday. We have at least one to three stations across just in Arizona, the Valley of the Sun here. We would have people on a Friday making two, 300 signs. See, that's another batch of another 42 more signs for tonight. Young people are it's just they're natural born activists it's in their blood they're you know they they're rebellious they rebel against their parents and their teachers and and so it's in them you know not to be fearful and and to stand up don't just play by the rules think of ways to do unique things that break through it's not just what kind of places it's like can you attach it if you can attach it it went up just walk down the street inconspicuously with the signs you know, then you get somewhere, put up a sign, just keep on walking. And all these young people that had never even thought, they go, you got a permit to put that sign up? Never even crossed their mind. Didn't even blaze over their cortex, brush it at all, that they were going to seek some kind of permission from the man to challenge the man. Yeah, don't you like that little Spartan thing going on? Yeah, it's looks just like him, man. Looks just like him. Campaigns are very leery about sort of these volunteers. That is, they want people to come in and volunteer for the campaign and they want you to do exactly what you're told. Come in and stuff envelopes or do this. What they don't want is anybody who will have any kind of loose connection with the campaign, but also some initiative who's sort of freelancing, you know, because those people can end up violating the law because they're not consulting the lawyers, and that gets the campaign in trouble. And so we've seen this sort of death of this type of spontaneous campaigning, and we've seen the centralization of campaigns. Campaigns become more and more centralized, especially presidential campaigns. Many, many people got very passionate and gave their time or their money or just rose in a way above those regulations you were talking about and said, we're, we're not going to do things the normal way. And I think that's why the Ron Paul campaign was successful and why people have tried to imitate it haven't done very well. Because they've tried to plan it and you can't plan it. You have to inspire people and let them do what they do best. I wrote about one of the first times people tried to mess with the Ron Paul movement. It was in Iowa when there was a candidates forum being put on by the Iowans for tax reform. They didn't want to let Ron Paul participate. Ron Paul's been long said to be the taxpayer's best friend. I don't think he's ever voted to increase taxes once because he doesn't think there should be any, no income tax in particular. You know, it would be like not inviting Batman to your convention against the Riddler. You know, how could you not invite Ron Paul to this? So the Ron Paul people decided they were going to have their own event in the next room. They ended up getting twice as many people at their event, which was much more interesting. There was no propaganda in it. It was all real information. We now live in an age, now for a good many years, way too many years, that the federal government owns all our income and we're permitted to keep a certain percentage. That is the terrible notion of the personal income tax, which we should get rid of. And here's Ron Paul, by the way. You know, he wants to abolish the IRS and replace it with nothing. Well, yeah, I can understand why you wouldn't want to have a your candidates for him. I've been involved in startups before. I'm in the background of starting a hospital software company. So you understand the power of organization. But what I hadn't really experienced in my life was the power of spontaneous order, where people see a shared vision. They come from all different political philosophies, all different life experiences, but there's a shared vision of what it means to be Americans and to have a country that follows the rules. And things just started coming together.
As you can see, Mitt Romney's got buses coming in from the four corners of Iowa. They gave all their voters yellow shirts. We were parked right at the entrance. We watched every one of Mitt Romney's buses pull up and they'd have their little delegation out there to round these people up. They didn't let them talk to anybody. I mean, you couldn't even talk to them. Restore our Constitution, Ron Paul. Just heard them in there and I guess they got them to vote and then they would do whatever they wanted. Looks like it's a carnival. Get the kids in so you get the parents in. One big carnival ride. We haven't had the richest campaign, but we have had the hardest working, most enthusiastic, dedicated group of people who know and understand it's worth the effort. I think all of us, including Dr. Paul himself, were blown away by grassroots response. I don't want to use the word out of control. <laughs> it was unbelievable from then on. The kids would hear about the campaign on the internet and look at the videos and get their parents involved. to be overtaxed and overregulated and overrun by bureaucrats. The founders would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. This is of a piece of a sort of 230-year-old American tradition of, you know, rugged individualism and independence and reverence for liberty, and those things are not as alive as they once were in American society, obviously, but they still exist, and I think Ron Paul speaks for a lot of people who, who still uphold those ideas. The Constitution was written very precisely to restrain the power and force of government and to protect the liberties of each and every one of us. Well, I do think you should value people who speak from the heart uh, and who tell the truth. And you should also value people who honor the vision of your founders and respect the most sublime constitution devised by human intelligence. You're basically saying that we should take our marching orders from Al-Qaeda if they want us off the Arabian Peninsula, we should leave? <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm saying we should take our marching orders from our constitution. That's where I take my marching Chris, orders, Chris, not from any enemy. Over this way. They were downright rude to him during the debates. Some of these anchor guys would marginalize him and disrespect him there in front of national television audiences, and it was, it was shame, shameful. Cong Congressman Paul, uh, yet another question about electability. Uh, do you have any, sir? Fox News' intent and purpose was to discredit Ron Paul because he represented what the Republican Party used to be, but better yet, what conservatism used to be. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me? because I'm a strict fiscal conservative, because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China, and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy, in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here? Congressman, we are one nation. We can't be divided. We have to be one nation under God. That means if we make a mistake, we make it as a single country, the United States of America, no. not the divided States of America. When we make a mistake, it is the obligation of the people through their representatives to correct the mistake, not to continue the mistake. And that's what we do on the floor of the Senate? No, we've dug a hole for ourselves and we've dug a hole for our party. We're losing elections and we're going down next year if we don't change it. And it has all to do with foreign policy and we have to wake up to this fact. Even if we lose elections, we should not lose our honor and that is more important we're than losing, the Republican Party. We've lost over 5,000 Americans over there in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and, and plus the civilians killed. How many more do you want to lose? How long are you going to be there? How long, right. what do we have to pay to save face? That's all we're doing is saving face. It's time thank we came gentlemen, home. Gentlemen, thank you. I want to tell you that that kind of isolationism, sir, is what caused World War II. We allowed Hit Hitler to come to power with that kind of attitude of isolationism and appeasement. Okay. Well, I just finished having Thanksgiving with the troops, and their message to you is, let us win. Let us win. Right. That's what they want.